Good afternoon, this is Jim Williams with the Hurricane City Tropical Update for September 5th around 6.30 p.m. A little late to get a video out this afternoon due to my personal schedule, but I want to try to talk about what's going to happen over the next 24 hours primarily with Hurricane Irma because this is a extremely powerful hurricane, uh, Category 5 hurricane. Here is the close-up enhanced satellite image of Irma, and if you look at that eye, you don't see eyes that perfect very often. It's perfectly symmetrical. Um, the deep red banding around the eye is the CDO, and that fluctuates. It goes up and down, but when you see the reds and the dark maroon colors around the eye wall, that would indicate that it's strengthening, and once again, it's beginning to strengthen. Uh, the winds are 185 miles per hour. There's only been a few hurricanes that have reached that magnitude. Um, right here in the office at Hurricane City, we have a map on the wall showing all the Category 5 hurricanes that have ever made landfall in the Atlantic Basin. And there's maybe, let's see, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. About 11 of them have actually made landfall as Category 5 hurricanes since 1871. I may be wrong on that. I'm just glancing at this map over here, and I have to, I have to close up uh, look at it. But it's roughly around a dozen or less Category 5s have ever hit land as Category 5. That's going to happen tomorrow morning. The island of St. Martin, the island of Antigua, although the eye may pass just north of Antigua, uh, they're going to get that eye wall destructive winds, but St. Martin's going to get the eye probably passing right over it, and the U.S. Virgin Islands have a chance for that as well. Anguilla, St. Kitts, St. Bart's, all these areas are just going to get absolutely pounded. Population, roughly 200, 250,000 people. I'm assuming maybe most of those people did get out of harm's way, hopefully, that they're not going to have to deal with this, but this destruction is going to be unimaginable tomorrow in these northeastern leeward islands if you were to try to stand out in winds in a category 5 hurricane like this it would pick you up like a leaf and throw you that's how strong those winds are and there's going to be massive destruction tomorrow morning in the islands of the northeastern leeward islands there is a live camera shot from the island of st bart's this is just to the southeast of st martin and this small island, uh, it, look at it right now, it's not that bad. They still have their power on. Uh, they're, they're, they're not really getting much bad weather right now, but probably starting around midnight, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, the sustained tropical storm force wind field will move in on the islands, and then things will quickly go downhill from, from there. And then probably 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, they're going to get absolutely pounded by this hurricane. These links can be found on the current featured Click, uh, if you go to the front page of Hurricane City and click on St. Martin, it will give you all these cameras and views and news and information coming out of the northeastern Leeward Islands. Looking at the radar from the northeastern Leeward Islands, you can see the eye heading towards land right now. And it's very ominous looking. And uh, this is closing in quickly. Before you know it, I know there's probably not going to be much sleep going on in the northern Leeward Islands tonight and those small islands of Antigua, Barbuda, uh, St. Bart's, St. Martin, Anguilla, St. Kitts, all these islands. Uh, I, it, I'd imagine it would be hard to sleep tonight, but try to get some sleep tonight if you are listening from these areas or you know their family in those areas and you're in contact with them because they're going to need all the strength that they can muster up going into tomorrow when they see the aftermath of what this hurricane is potentially going to cause in those islands. So get some sleep tonight if you can. It's going to be a long day tomorrow in the northeastern Leeward Island. This is the beautiful beautiful thing about the HurricaneCity.com database. You go by island by island or city by city, and you can pull up the information on the history of all the hits from hurricanes and tropical storms. The very box here at the top of this um, database page for St. Martin. Look right here. The most likely time to be hit by a hurricane, August 31st through September 6th. And each city has a different height for their hurricane season. Like, for example, Florida, a lot of locations in Florida tend to be over in here. And in Texas, they tend to be over in this range over here. But uh, pretty much an indication that the database statistics are valuable. You can do some research and find out uh, what what would 
more, more than likely happen in, the, in wherever you happen to live and then learn about the hurricane history. But the last time this area was affected was back in 2014. The island was affected by Hurricane Gonzalo with 85 mile per hour winds. And think about that. That's 100 miles an hour less than what they're going to be dealing with in the morning. And that was back on October 13th of 2014. And also what you can do in this database is scroll down and find out what happened with all those hurricanes. So let's look at what happened from Gonzales. Uh, one person was killed uh, riding out the hurricane in a boat. 37 boats were destroyed, but over, uh, mostly minor damage to infrastructure. There was about six inches of rain. And uh, it did do some damage, but think about 100 miles an hour less. And that's what they, they dealt with back in 2014. Far different animal here uh, approaching right now. Now, they have had some very significant hurricanes in the past, uh, mainly uh, Category 2, a few uh, borderline Category 3. Back in 1960, Donna hit here with 150 mile per hour winds. Seven people were killed. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, Hurricane Luis was a bad one back in 1995, 225 mile an hour winds. A thousand were left homeless, 14 killed. Uh, that was by 140 mile per hour winds, pressure 27.61. And uh, that uh, was a very bad hurricane, and this is going to be even worse for those people. Just think about that for a minute. Uh, hurricane Jose hit back in 1999 with 95 mile per hour winds, and then there was Wrong Way Lenny. Lenny was a system that developed in the Western Caribbean and moved toward the Eastern Caribbean, and that hit the island with 130 mile per hour winds, and it sat there over the island for about 24 hours. Uh, the island took a beating; 13 people were killed. Um, uh, insurance rates went up. It was a, a major disaster for the island uh, back in 1999. And then Earl hit back in 2010 with 110 mile per hour winds. But you get it. Basically, mainly Category 2s and a few Category 3s. There's only been a few like this one that have been up in that Category 4, Category 5 range. And both times they had a double digit death toll. So we could expect that tomorrow. Uh, let's just hope that a lot of these people got out of the area because this is going to be really bad. One more thing I wanted to point out about the database. Uh, they get average, hit by an average of um, once every 6.3 years by a hurricane. They've had 23 hurricanes since 1871. And they've uh, major hurricanes only happen about once every 18 years on this island. So this is not an annual thing or a, a common thing. But they have had their, their share of majors. And here is the map on the front page of HurricaneCity.com, and boy, can things change in a hurry. We had just Irma that we were tracking uh, yesterday, and now we have Tropical Storm Jose, which popped out in the East Atlantic this morning, and we have a new tropical depression in the southwest Gulf of Mexico down here off of Mexico, and of course, here's Jose out here, and of course, Irma right in the middle. So very active pattern right now in the Atlantic Basin, and it uh, looks like all indications, most of the models indicate that Jose will move north. It could be a factor for Bermuda. We'll keep an eye on that. And this is going to circle back around and head inland, uh, according to the models and the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, just north of uh, Veracruz, Mexico. So what we're going to focus on is Irma here. And the indications are that this is going to be a threat for Florida. It could pass directly over the state. Uh, it would be the worst case scenario to have a major hurricane pass right up the gut of the state. That happened back in 1960 with Hurricane Donna. So uh, it could be a very, very serious situation. And Cuba could also be impacted by this. Uh, Havana, some of the models, the European model, wants to take it right into Havana, Cuba. And those old dilapidated buildings in Havana could really take a hit from this. But we'll focus on these areas in future videos coming up over the next several days. Uh, but right now, all thoughts are with the northeastern Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. That would be tomorrow uh, afternoon and the evening hours that Puerto Rico would be getting brushed or, or potentially directly impacted by Hurricane Irma. So let's quickly go over the two major models that everybody likes to keep track of. And this is the GFS model at tropicaltidbits.com. And let's go frame by frame and see what happens here. This takes it, this model is shifted to the right. And we've seen a trend lately with the model shifting to the left. So this is an interesting development as the model takes it right through the Bahamas, right over Andros Island, and then turns it 
right off the coast of Florida. And this is what the consensus of the models was a couple of days ago. And then they flipped to the left, showing potential for going in the Gulf of Mexico. Now the GFS is back to the right again. In fact, earlier today, the GFS runs were showing the eye coming right over South Florida and then bouncing off the East Coast. Now it has it turning off the East Coast and heading up into the South Carolina, North Carolina border, which was the consensus, uh, as I said, a couple of days ago. Now you compare that with the European model, also known as the ECMWF, and let's put this into motion, north of the Greater Antilles, plows right into Cuba, which would be horrible, right near the city of Nuvitas, and then heads right over land towards Havana, Cuba, and then makes the right-hand turn over the western keys, uh, the Key West area, and then up into southwest Florida, and then right up through the state. The European model has been consistently the best performing model, and uh, it, that has been very consistent since the beginning with this. The European model is the best, and that doesn't always mean that that's exactly what is going to happen. But we're going to watch for trends on the next run of the Euro to see if it takes to the direction that the GFS is showing. Because the GFS was left as well, now the GFS is shifting right. So is the European model going to do that as well? That's the question. And we'll know that tomorrow for impacts for the United States. It's interesting to note that the two models that uh, I put a lot of stock in when it comes to major hurricanes, the UK Met model actually has it traveling uh, over Cuba for the most part and then clipping southeast Florida and then heading up north. That's the So it's more similar to the GFS than it is to the European. It's kind of a combination of the two. And the Canadian ensembles, and especially the Canadian operational model, takes it well into the Gulf and up towards the Florida Panhandle. So as we stated uh, in last night's live show, and we're going to state it in tonight's live show as well, that everybody is still uh, on the table for potential hits from Hurricane Irma from uh, Mississippi, Alabama, all the way to the outer banks of North Carolina and even up into the Northeast. It is not etched in stone where this is going to go, and a lot can change in five days. Last year's error rates from the National Hurricane Center, five-day cone was off by 160 miles. So that that's, uh, that's a huge difference. That can be up in here, or that could be down in this area here. That's at five days. That That's the widespread uh, going that far out. So a lot of uncertainty remains. People need to be very uh, aware of what's happening. Uh, pay attention to your local news. Pay attention to the National Weather Service reports and the National Hurricane Center, of course. And uh, you better be prepared because one way or the other, Florida is going to get, at the very least, some squally tropical storm force winds on either coast. And at the very most, it could be catastrophic major hurricane force winds. Sorry for the short video tonight, but uh, we had a very busy day today. Tonight, if you want to know a lot more about this storm, tune in to HurricaneCity.tv or go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Hurricane City Tracking, and we will be live Myself and Bill Phillips talking about Hurricane Irma, and we'll, we'll briefly discuss the other systems, but right now all eyes are on Irma. And we'll talk about the model data, we'll talk about the hurricane hunters, the, the structure of the storm, everything much more than I could do in one of these update videos. Now tomorrow morning, Bill will be covering this as it makes uh, landfall in the northern Leeward Islands. Uh, again, that core is going to pass over all those islands, primarily St. Martin. So we're going to focus on that area tomorrow morning, and then we're going to start turning our attention to the Cuba, Western Bahamas, Florida angle of it uh, over the next several nights as we do these shows. And then, of course, when that all happens, we'll be live covering that as it happens as well for the Florida potential. So that's it for now. Um, again, tune in tonight for more coverage. I'll be back with another update video tomorrow. Don't know when it'll be, probably in the afternoon or evening like tonight. And then after that, I'll be doing the videos at the regular basis in the mornings and possibly in the evenings as well. That's it for now. I'm Jim Williams.